So hello, welcome to our One Greenway, One Iron Chat. Delighted to be joined today by Lorena Ochoa. Lorena, thank you very much for joining us. Great to see you. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm excited for this um, interview and ready to go to visit uh, Portugal. <laughs> Exactly. Now, listen, you played in the inaugural One Greenway Invitational last year. Tell me, how was it for you? Yes, well, I um, I was uh, very, uh, you know, just happy to be there. Uh, I'm a really good friend of Jan Noel and just receiving his invitation and the way or the idea of the event of getting together, you know, uh, some other players, men and women, and especially for me being able to see my, my friends. Um, I love I love the tournament, I love the band. I think it's something special. Um, being able to play with a few amateurs, you know, but at the same time trying to play good golf and, and give a good uh, exhibition. So it was it was a great tournament for me, a great week. I really, really enjoyed it. And that's why, you know, we're gonna go there one more time and, and I'm really excited to be there soon. Absolutely. Now, listen, you finished 10th last year, didn't you? You played well. You had a good week. Yes, yes, yes. I have to say that I was very nervous. Um, you know, uh, just a couple of weeks before the event, you know, I was okay. I need to practice more and more. You know, I need to feel my swing. I need to feel comfortable. And, and obviously, I know that it's a, an exhibition more than anything, just to be able to, you know, the, do the event and and especially the reason for the, the tournament, you know, to socialize and have a good time with all the amateurs and, and all the different players. But I was nervous about my game because I'm very competitive. So, you know, same same thing this year. I practiced a little bit, a couple hours this morning, just trying to, to get a good feel of, of my game. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can play good golf. So tell me, how much do you play nowadays then? <laughs> I don't play much. Uh, actually, I just arrived yesterday from vacation. It was a three-week vacation with the family. Uh, I was able to go to the beach with, with my relatives and spend some time. Also, at the snow, we went to, to do some uh, snow skiing. So it was a little bit of both. And uh, yesterday, um, I was here with, with my kids trying to organize going back to school. And then I told my husband, I need to practice. I need to practice these next uh, few weeks for sure every day, you know. And uh, he was just making fun, uh, you know, at me, he's okay, on Saturday we have a good uh, golf match, you know, we want to play together on Saturday. So I, I, I know that I'm very professional and when I have a, an event or an exhibition, I, I'm very responsible and I practice and, and trying to, to feel okay with my game. But at the same time, it's impossible to be um, very competitive because I don't do this anymore, you know, as a living. It's just more of a, of a relaxed time. And I need to be easy on myself and just enjoy the, the event, you know? So, so the, obviously you're playing upcoming in Portugal. So how many, say, similar events would you play in a year? Would you play sort of four, five, or, or not even as many as that? You know, I, I do play, uh, I have a couple of big events uh, for my foundation uh, that I do here in Mexico. And then I have this exhibition in Portugal. We also went last year, for example, at the end of the year, we went to Korea to play a tournament with a Surrey Pack. That was a lot of fun. And this year, especially this year, we have two new events. All of them is for the foundation. You know, what I, what I do today is to plan different exhibitions or tournaments for the foundation. So I've been very blessed, very lucky to have the support for the Mexican professionals. Abraham Anser and Carlos Ortiz from the men's tour, and as well as Gabby Lopez and Maria Fassi for the women's tour. So. Um, we do we do one or two exhibitions a year, uh, trying to raise money for the foundation. So it's it's great to always keep in touch with the game, but I need to be you know more relaxed. <laughs> you said you're still competitive, so tell me you know obviously the success you had on the LPGA tour, the major wins, the 27 LPGA tournaments, the 158 weeks at world number one. <laughs> you are a competitor, incredible success. Yes, you're retired, and as you said, your focus is on your foundation and, and family. But when you turn up at an event like the one in Portugal in a few weeks' time, how much does that the competitive juices start flowing again for you? Yes. Well, you know, the perfect example was playing there last year. Um, I just arrived there very relaxed. Alejandro came with me, my brother, and we were just, you know, doing some uh, practice round. And I started getting, you know, very competitive. So, okay, well, you know, what is the plan? I need to, you know, really understand the golf course, you know, how are the greens? And once the tournament starts, you know, you, you get back to those good memories and good feelings and 
you are aggressive and you're trying to make birdies, you know, I was really upset, you know, missing a few pots and and I I know exactly it's going to happen the same these years, you know, so I'm trying to prepare myself. Uh, like you said, I was able to play, you know, good last year, especially because we played both uh, men and women. And um, hopefully I can play even better today, this year. <laughs> Did you see some people, some faces, I guess you haven't seen for a number of years? Yes, you know, and I was able to, uh, I was paired with uh, Helen Alperton. Uh, I love her, you know, she's always been so much fun, uh, someone that I, I care a lot, you know, about her. And, and we know, you know, the, our backgrounds and the way we grew up, her playing in, in Sweden, for me in Mexico. And we actually have a lot of things in common. So um, I love playing with her. After the tournament in Portugal, we kept uh, in touch. And I think it's, it's just great. Uh, that first night that we have that get together, um, the cocktail before the, the tournament, uh, seeing those, you know, familiar faces, just giving them a big hug and talking about, you know, how excited we were to just being able to, to get together and play together again. It was, it was something special. That's why I'm going this year and I want to say thank you, you know, to the whole team and Januel in particular for uh, thinking about me. Uh, I'm really excited. Well, look, we're excited to have you back there, uh, Lorena. And I know, obviously, you really enjoyed the tournament itself, but tell me how much you enjoyed the experience of Quinta and Portugal too. Uh -huh. Well, you know, and, and I'm glad uh, to, to say that my husband is coming with me this year. I want to take uh, five days before the event just to, to know a little bit the, the country. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. I think this is, this is a great thing that we can do now, you know, because in a way um, we are more about enjoying the event and going there, you know, for the right reasons and helping, uh, you know, your team. And uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of time to travel around. So I'm really excited about that and take some uh, quality time with Andres, my husband. And as well, he's going to the event. So it's gonna be fun, you know, a fun week uh, for both of us. And did you enjoy the experience of Quinta de Lago last year playing? Did you get did you get a chance to, obviously you were busy playing and, and socializing and enjoying the event, but what did you make of Quinta de Lago as a resort? Yes, for sure it's a great resort. Uh, we, we, you know, didn't stop talking about, you know, a great experience, you know, how wonderful, how beautiful the place is, uh, having the two both, uh, both courses, you know, the houses around. It's just kind of like a, a perfect spot to go there for, for vacation, you know, not, not only a, a weekend home, but also just to live there, you know, it's, it, it was a dream. Hopefully we had a good weather this year and, and the food is spectacular. I remember talking uh, with Alejandro about the food and the few restaurants, you know, that, that you have around the area. It was it was a beautiful experience. Yes, I'm excited to go back. Fantastic. As I say, we're very much looking forward to seeing you there. Lorena, if I could just go back a little bit to your touch on your career. I know when you announced your retirement way back in 2010, you a lot of people were disappointed. A lot of golf fans were disappointed because they wanted to see you keep playing, you know, big fan favorite and people love what you did and how you conducted yourself as well. You said at the time, I mean, that was quite an easy decision for you, wasn't it? You just knew that you were ready, you wanted to look at the next phase of your life. But how difficult was that adjustment from being a professional athlete to retiring and then <laughs> on your new life? Yes, well, um, you know, I don't want to say that, um, you know, they blame my husband, you know, they blame Andres, you know, but uh, it's, it's, it's not right, you know. He was there with me, supporting me my last few years that we were together. I won uh, many tournaments, you know, they were my, my best two years in my career. But I also knew, you know, and, and I was very brave to listen to my, my voice, inside voice, you know. It was time for me to stop. Uh, golf was not my priority anymore, you know. I really, uh, I was ready and 100% sure that I went to get married and start a family. And it was very difficult for me at the end just to continue playing, you know, practicing and traveling. So I was brave enough to listen to myself, you know, and just to make a decision. Um, and I always try to tell them, you know, I retired because of all of the good reasons. That that's why it was easy for me. You know, I wanted to start a family. I wanted to spend more quality time, you know, here in Mexico. Uh, obviously, it's a lot easier to play golf and win tournaments than being a mother, you know. <laughs> it's a big challenge every day. But um, I retired because of the right reasons, you know. So I'm, I'm um, really happy, I'm really proud that I was brave enough to make the decision, you know, at the right time. 
Because then I think, you know, some athletes, they, they wait a little bit too long and then they get tired about traveling or practicing or the media or all the activities that you have to, you know, do as a professional because it's very difficult. And uh, I can tell you one, one thing, you know, I was 100% sure. I listened to myself, you know, what I wanted to do, you know, with my life. And I don't change myself for, for anybody. You know, I have three kids now. Um, they are now 11, nine, and Diego is gonna turn uh, seven this this uh, weekend. So you know, it's it's great time, family time, and as well as I, I'm busy in a good way. You know, I choose my schedule. Um, I work a lot for my foundation, and I'm really happy. So th thank you for asking. <laughs> oh, I know, because it was. I mean, did you miss after you announced your retirement and after you went on tour, even? 18 months two years did you did you ever was there ever a point where you did miss it or was it absolutely the right decision and you were just so focused on the new stage of your life that you didn't really look back well i think you know for sure you always miss uh, being competitive and trying to win a tournament on sunday i mean the feeling of just arriving to a new golf course and doing the practice and you know, the, the, the first the t shot, you know, on Thursday when they call your name, you know, from Guadalajara, Mexico, Loreno, Cho, and it, it's, it's not, it's a feeling that is impossible to describe. And, and of course, I miss that. But as a professional, you have to do many other things, you know, and, and different activities and do also things with your sponsors uh, for the tournaments in every event. You know, you have the dinner and the pro am and the ceremony. And, and also activities inside, you know, different cities or different countries, and um, and and those are the things that I don't I don't miss because it's really difficult, you know, is is the difficult part of the job, you know, and um, and I was just uh, you know trying to be honest with myself, you know, I achieved my goals, uh, I wanted to be the number one player in the world, and uh, because of the reason of being able to reach out and help others and help kids education here in my country. And, and I was, you know, ready to go, very proud, uh, happy, you know, with, with uh, just achieving my dream of being the, the first Mexican, you know, playing on tour and winning tournaments. And and now uh, the new generations are, are going out, you know, it's, it's not my time anymore. <laughs> I want to come on to that, but I just I just quickly want to ask, you mentioned obviously you have a, a tougher life now, an amazing life, but it's a hard life being a mum of three. Do your kids play mm -hmm. golf? They do play golf. Actually, today at 4 p.m. we're gonna go and, and play some golf. Um, you know, they know. Uh, especially Pe Pedro is uh, really good. He hits the ball far. Really good natural swing. But I don't see that that they like it that much. They know that they need to learn. That is important for the family. And they go out and play. You know, with the cousins and and even with my father. You know. But uh, I don't see them playing like seriously, you know, just just for fun. I mean, so we'll see. Maybe the little one, maybe Diego, he's gonna turn seven. Maybe he gives us a surprise. <laughs> Absolutely. And you mentioned this with the new generation in the in the in the world of golf now. You look at the top of the women's game. There's so much talent all around, and I know Nelly Corder for one. You know, she's an absolute superstar. Played uh, before Christmas. Um, at the uh, QBE, and a lot of the male pros were just astounded by the quality of a golf swing. Tell me how good you think the top of the women's game is right now, how much talent we have in world golf right now. Yes, I think it's amazing. I think uh, they keep improving and improving. And I even talked to Dave, uh, you know, Brooker, my, my caddy, and he's amazed himself, you know. It's like, Lorena, you need to see these girls, you know, the way they practice, the way they hit the ball, the, you know, accuracy. You know how good they are around the greens, the feeling, you know, the pots, and um, he gives a saying, "But you should come, you know, you should come. You are able to do it." You know, I said, "No, no." <laughs> but uh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I watch some golf on TV, like all of you, and and just to see um, the the level, you know, of the game and the competition. Every week, there are so many, you know, players that you know could uh, win a tournament, surprise you with seven birdies in a row, you know, and with rounds are 64, 63, and I'm, I'm very impressed, you know, and I do want to say congratulations to the LPGA because they, they done a, a fabulous job, uh, you know, with new tournaments, new faces, you know, new sponsors, and I think it's, a, it's, a, it's something great uh, with all the challenges because there are many, you know, in difficult times with the pandemic, they are in a really good position right now, and it's great uh, golf to watch. 
yeah, the LPJ is in a good spot, isn't it? Is there anyone that you're particularly looking forward to watching in 2023 or anyone that golf fans should really look out for? I don't want to uh, make a mistake or get some enemies. No, no, no. Just watching good golf, enjoying. Uh, obviously, my Mexicans, you know, Gabby Lopez and Maria Fassi are out there. Uh, I think at the end of the year, they have really maybe two, three events that they, you know, kind of like, you know, uh, stood up and, and they have really, really good game, good talent. They are able to win. Uh, I'm really looking forward to just be close to them this year, trying to help them as much as I can, especially Gabby. I'm really close to her and uh, it should be a, a great year. Fantastic. How much interest do you take in the Solheim Cup? Would you watch it on TV? Do you, do you, know, the, you, know, the, do you know the teams quite well? What, what sort of interest do you take in the Solheim? Yeah, since uh, I was on tour, I always, you know, root for both of them. I think we all want to watch, you know, as fan, me too. I'm a big fan of them. Just a, a good exhibition, a good event, a good competition, you know, what you see, what they create with the atmosphere and the countries, you know, rooting, you know, for the team is something very special. I just want to enjoy it, you know, and I wish them the best uh, for both teams. Absolutely. Can I just ask you, Lorena, as well, just it's interesting to hear you talk as, as well. You retired at the top of your game, as we all know, having achieved so much. What's your take on, on Tiger Woods right now? The ability that, as a uh, obviously, the success he's had in the game of golf and as a, a former world number one, of course, the hunger and the competition is still there. He still wants to play, he still wants to compete. Physically, obviously, he's gone through a lot. Back surgery, knee surgery. How long do you think we'll see Tiger Woods competing? Yes. Well, that's a very difficult question. I think I'm not that uh, close, you know, I don't follow you know, what he's doing uh, every day. But the, what I like to see is his smile, you know, that he's out there, he's happy, he's enjoying, you know, this time of uh, his life, you know, playing in December with his kid. It was something spectacular, you know, that we all enjoy. And I think it's just nice to see, you know, the joy of the game, you know, that he's finally, he's able to put everything behind and just trying to keep fighting uh, about his uh, health. But at the same time, you know, uh, he keeps all of us, you know, okay, what is he doing? You know, which tournament he's playing? I think it's, it's uh, something that I want to say congratulations, you know, to him. I admire, uh, you know, what he's, uh, where he is right now today. And it's great to see him enjoy. So I wish him the best. Absolutely. You got to meet him a couple of times, didn't you, in your career? Yes, and I have a, a great picture of both where uh, I was maybe 11, you know, 12, and he was 16, 17. And then when I saw him uh, one time at the Masters at a ceremony with the Associated Press uh, Award, he was very nice to take, his, you know, he took the time to, to give me a, a nice uh, the dedication with a the, with the picture, you know, and he smiled and he said, like, oh, you know, this is great picture, both of us were just, you know, with the curly hair, you know, and, and, and uh, I have that uh, picture in a very special place in my house. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, listen, Lorena, thank you so much for talking to us today. Um, I'm very much looking forward to uh, seeing you in Portugal. And as you said, the competitive juices will be flowing. And I know yeah. you've got a little bit of practice before you turn up, haven't you? Before you head out there again, you'll be on the golf course for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, for sure. I'm ready to practice. I go this afternoon with my kids and I'm going to try to, you know, feel comfortable with my game and just enjoy the week uh, in Portugal. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you in Portugal. Thank you, Lorena. Our one green weight, one iron chat with Lorena Ochoa. Thanks ever so much.